There are many places that are mentioned again and again in the standard reading on Haunted Britain. Pick up anything that starts with Haunted Britain, or British hauntings, or a Gazetteer of hauntings, or an A to Z of hauntings, and there are the same old names, and the same old stories, always appearing. In my time, I have visited many of these places, but not all, I hasten to add. And in truth, have always come away from them feeling underwhelmed. The reality never matches the hype and the embellishment of a tale that has obviously expanded over time. One of these places is the village of Pluckley in Kent. Pluckley is often cited as the most haunted village in England. But I'm not going to waste time regaling the tales that have been told Go and read the types of books that I mentioned earlier for that. Instead, I will tell of my personal experiences there. And truth be told, they are few and far between, and I will skip the many times that I was at Buckley, and absolutely nothing happened. When I lived in Kent during the late 1970s to the mid-1990s, I and a couple of friends set out to investigate some of the locations associated with the alleged hauntings. And here we fast forward to the Black Horse pub, this pub is almost 700 years old and experiences poltergeist activity. Items move across the bar. Things are tidied away. And sometimes coats and wallets are hidden. These invariably turn up much later. There is also the ghost of a woman in one of the upstairs rooms that has been seen wearing a long red dress. And it is said that a phantom woman in Victorian clothing lurks by the bar. It is also further said to be the home of the spirit of a young girl, perhaps the one who causes the poltergeist activity. We were informed on one of our visits to Pluckley, on a warm summer's afternoon in 1995, that the previous day, two diners sitting next to a vacant table had witnessed a piece of cutlery lift out of and move through the air from the cutlery drawer at the side of the room and lay itself on the vacant table next to them. The pub was always much too busy for me to make any direct contact with any of the alleged spirits, and this occasion was no different. After our visit to the Black Horse, we made our way to the church and churchyard. We walked around the graveyard for a little while, but no energies were experienced, so we made for the church and were gratified to find that it was open. St Nicholas's Church is most probably built on the site of an older Saxon church, for Pluckley is a name of Saxon origin and the monks of Canterbury recorded a church here in 1090. The East Chapel, or Dering Chapel, was rebuilt by Edward Dering in the 17th century over the Dering family vault. Two, or in some accounts three, ghosts are said to haunt the church and churchyard. I know two. The first, named the Red Lady, is said to wander around the churchyard, especially around the Dering tomb, and local legend asserts that she is searching for the grave of her young child. The second is the White Lady, who is supposed to haunt the church itself. The sounds of knocking are said to be heard coming from beneath the church at night, often accompanied by a flickering and fluttering light inside the empty building. It is often written that a group of psychic researchers once persuaded the vicar to lock them in the church all night. When he released them in the morning, they told him about a white dog that they had seen. On entering the church, it had the typical slightly dampish, musty odour of an old church, but it felt warm and welcoming. After a quick walk around, looking at the features and the brasses, I settled down by the entrance door, and my friend sat on one of the pews near the altar, adjacent to the aisle and we waited and watched quietly for a couple of hours possibly after half an hour had passed sitting in silence as we sat there immersed in the calm atmosphere of the place I heard a clunk it was the sound of the door latch lifting I immediately thought that someone was coming in then the sound of the door opening and closing but the door never moved this was followed by a vague, somehow distant, quick, clippy-cloppy steps, as of a small woman in wooden-heeled shoes on the bricks of the church floor. The footsteps walked from where I was at the door to the central aisle, where they turned right and walked towards my friend located near the altar. Looking at him, it was immediately obvious that he had heard them as well. As the steps approached the altar, they just ceased. 
and the church was in silence again. Before we left the church, we heard what sounded like a pigeon fluttering about above us. Although we looked quite intensely for the bird, we couldn't see any, even in the area where the sounds were coming from, which was a window high up. The final part of our investigation at Pluckley was conducted as the light was fading. This was in the churchyard. We spent a couple of hours there, but saw and felt nothing out of the ordinary. Certainly no women in red.